Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over CSS linear gradients. Okay, so I've already got some boxes set up, pretty plain, but I'd like to experiment with some linear gradients to add a little bit of style to these boxes. And this is going to be pretty easy to do. So I've already got the boxes created. They all have their own classes. I'm going to go ahead and start off with box number one. So dot box one and the property I'm going to use is background image. That's pretty unusual because you would think background color but we use background image for this and then I'm going to put in linear gradient opening parentheses. So instead of putting in a background image with URL we put in linear gradient and now we can decide some things. The first parameter we can put in here is the direction we want. I'm going to leave direction out for a moment because it's optional and instead I'll just put in a couple of colors. I'll put in yellow green comma and then I'll do a hex code for super dark gray. I'm going to save this, head back to my browser and refresh and we can see we now have that gradient going from top to bottom. We have the green color merging into the black color. Okay, so let's try putting in a little direction and I'm going to put in to right comma and so these are simply comma separated parameters to right. Control S to save, browser refresh and now we can see that that green starts on the left and transitions smoothly into the black on the right. Okay, let's try another one. Now with box 2 I'll do something similar. Background image, linear gradient. But in this time, instead of doing two right, I'm going to put in a degree. I'll put in 135 degrees, comma, yellow green, and then changing into the dark gray. Browser refresh, and you can see I can make a pretty nice angle going from the top left corner of the box to the bottom right corner. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Technically, we could have done the same thing with this first one. In addition to two right, you can do two top, two bottom, two left. So right, bottom, left, top. But you can also do two bottom right, if I can spell it properly. There we go. So two bottom right will get us the same look as doing 135 degrees. However, if you're comfortable with that particular unit of measurement, you might just do the degrees and never use the two right, two bottom right, two bottom left, or options like that. So 135 degrees works super nice. Now I'm going to change the percentages a little bit here. I'm going to copy box 2 and I'll head over to box 3. This time I'm going to just say to bottom, or I could do 190 degrees of course, and instead of just yellow green and my gray, instead of just putting in two colors, I'm also going to put in some numeric values. So check this out. With my yellow green, I'll put in 50%. And with my gray, I'll go ahead and put in 75%. I'll save those, browser refresh, and we get a slightly different result. Now it looks like my degrees might be a little off. I think I did 190. I probably meant to do 180 to get it completely up and down. So now we can see that the green is occurring through the 50% mark of the height of this box and then it goes to black by the time it gets to 75%. So that's what these numbers represent. By comparison, I could say, look, I want it to be green by 10%, which up here, and it's going to be black by the time it gets to 75%. And if I made this number 25%, we should see very little yellow green and it should be going to super, super dark gray very quickly in the sequence. And it's, the transition is obviously a lot smaller, so it goes a lot faster. Now using a similar technique, we can even make some stripes with CSS. So I'm going to go ahead and copy box 3 and paste. However, instead of just doing linear gradient with this one, I'm going to put in repeating linear gradient. Now not just that, but I'm going to modify some of my colors here and I'll just kind of retype them. I'll still do 180 degrees, but um, let's see, I'm going to put in yellow green with no value, comma, yellow green with 10 pixels. I'm using a specific pixel amount instead of a percentage, comma, and I'll do my dark gray for the same 10 pixels, comma, and I'm going to do my dark gray for um, 20 pixels. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so that all fits on one line. So I've got yellow green with no value. 
I've got yellow green at 10 pixels, dark gray at 10 pixels, and then dark gray at 20 pixels. Let's see what we get with this. And refresh. Oops, and I did that in box three, so let me just go ahead and correct box three to box four. There we go. And you can see I'm starting to get a striped pattern. Now, the stripes here are pretty evenly dispersed, but we can alter those. So basically, we're just looking at the numeric numeric values put into place. For instance, I could make my yellow green, yellow green stripes a little smaller. I'll just dial that 10 pixels down to 5 pixels and we can see how oh, I'm starting to get that little gradient effect which I don't want. So I'm going to make the first measurement of my second color the same as the yellow green. So notice they're both set at 5 pixels now. That's going to give me a smaller green bar of only 5 pixels, and now the black bar is certainly much larger. And I can make it even larger by altering this last unit of measurement. Instead of 20 pixels, I'll do 30 pixels. So I can make very large black stripes mixed alternating with um, green stripes. So there we go, and I'll just dial this back a little bit. I'll do 25 pixels, 25 pixels, and then I'll do 50 pixels for the dark gray and I get to some even striping again where the black number is double the thickness of the middle two numbers. So it can do some pretty fancy effects and I guess I could have also done something like 45 degrees to make diagonal stripes with this. So there's a little bit of CSS linear gradients and you can do a lot of pretty cool things with that. So I invite you to experiment a little bit and start to pick some patterns and some colors. And although I didn't do it here, you can use RGBA values so that you can do a uh, transparency fade out using that. So give it a shot.